Okay, here we go. So we're live. Sorry. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Masa al-khair alaikum kullukum. Wa inshallah tu kullukum khair. Fa ahsan hal. Fa al-awdaa li mawguda hawlin al-alam. Al-corona endemic. Yani, let's look at the bright side. Mekhaliyana kullina nuqad fi al-bayt. Bas midyan hu waqti aktar. Nadamil activities, educational activities. Um... النهاردة أنا بدي small session على ال adult palpatomies وده controversial issue بقاله فترة ناس كده بتكلم عليه فقلت أخد وقت وأ shed some light على ال techniques اللي أنا بستعملها في العيادة عندي في حالات ال adult palpatomies النهاردة طبعا أنا مدعو من الأكاديمية الدولية طبعا البص الكبير احمد النحراوي هو المنظم للسيشنز دي واحمد دلوقتي قاعد في البيت وبياكل اكل طول اليوم وناوي يصلي بالازدال قريب ولكن هو برضو شغال واكتف سو اي كان سي لوت اوف بيبل ار اون لاين اند سو ام جونا ستارت جيفينج ماي برسبكتيف اون ادلت بوتوميز Um, okay, so as endodontists, we have been treating our teeth for years, not by treating the pulp, but by removing the pulp and replacing the pulp with artificial materials, whether it be gutta percha, whether it, whether it be um, um, hydraulic calcium silicate cements, MTA, biodentin. We're going to, we, were, we, were, we were taught to fill our canals. And more recently, We started, uh, maybe in the last 20 years, 15 years, we started investigating the idea of regenerative procedures, revascularization, in which we create pulp within the pulp space of a previously necrotic tooth or a non-vital tooth. And this brought us to understand if we spend so much effort trying to bring back pulp to life, what would be better than preventing it from dying in the first place? And I always ask this question, uh, what's better to fill the pulp with? Gutta Persia, MTA, bioceramic materials. What's the best option to fill canals with? And the answer is very self-evident. If you fill the canals with pulp, or at least you leave the pulp within the canals, that is the best filling. Because uh, we, we have come to learn, looking through tons of research of an anatomy, that um, the, the um, uh, root canal systems are complex, irregular, anastomosing, joining, confluent, and very difficult to negotiate manually and to reach even with our best efforts of irrigation and um, activation of irrigant. So putting that into mind, the best situation would be to not remove the pulp from the canal. And this brings us to the contentious issue of should we do this with all our teeth that come, any molar that comes in, any anterior that comes in, should we do that? Historically, pulpotomies were reserved to be used with uh, phenolic compounds like formocresol and CMCP in which these materials would in, in, in inadvertently fix the pulp or result in pulp death over time. Now, with the, with the, ab, with the advent of um, bioceramic materials, MTA, uh, materials which are well accepted by the tissues, the, the mentality changes. We don't place a material inside the, the pulp so that it fixes the pulp. No, we place a material now so that it leaves the pulp alone and just allows it to heal without irritation. And historically, when we used to place... Um, Uh, form acresal compounds in the pulp and say some of some some I used to call these people um, pulp killers they would just put in the form acresal and let the pay, the pulp die the pain would go away on the short term but on the long term we had tons of problems um, with that in mind um, I think I'm going to start by showing a simple case of a pulpotomy okay and what it involves so I'm going to move to my uh, Uh, presentation just show you a few pictures of one of my cases so this was um, um, sorry about that yeah this was a, an, an, a lower eight 
she, she, my patient came to my office and she was she was in pain she had limited mouth opening i took an x-ray and the 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 the, the atu was very complex and i suggested extraction she had had a um, I think a, a composite restoration placed there a few um, uh, months before. Continuous pain on biting, continuous pain on cold. Um, her 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 um, symptoms weren't severe, so I told her, okay, instead of extracting, how about we do a pulpotomy? She was really against the extraction, so I opened up an axis cavity, and the next step would be to uh, evaluate the bleeding, and that is the really the key issue when you're dealing with um, pulpotomy is how much bleeding there is and whether you can control it or not. And depending on the amount of control to the bleeding, this will um, give you an estimate of w how inflamed the pulp is. So after that, there's, there's an example of what happens after I removed it. There was still a little more bleeding after about two minutes. So, and that's a close up. And then uh, I, I use this technique sometimes. I use a paper point and I apply a little um, pressure on the pulp, uh, the orifice. And uh, you can see um, the end result is a bloodless orifice. And that's the, the end result. Now at this point, you, you want to cap these pulp stumps with... Um, uh, some sort of um, uh, ca hydraulic calcium silicate cement. So this is, for instance, this is the video where I am inserting the 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 MTA. This was done with MTA, and you use a micro placement apical placement gun, and you can place it. Yeah, there you go. And you can see that being condensed. Which condensed? I call it compacted or adapted to the to the um, pulp stump and then I, I usually do it with a very large plugger or a paper point you can see there again just placing the MTA putting it in as, as adapted as possible to the pulp stumps and like I said I sometimes use the back of um, um, a paper point because sometimes if my MTA mix is a little too wet I want to dry it if it's um, so I, I just like doing that then I'll clean up and what you should be doing now is um, at this point you should um, um, place a, a, a cotton a moist cotton pellet in the pulp space and seal it for about uh, six to eight hours just for the MTA to set and then you're all set after that to do your restoration this case I can show you again this was the post operative so you can see the the roots were really complex there was a 90 degree curvature here 90 degree curvature here plus it was really inaccessible so this was an indication for an extraction her, her husband was a dentist and he was really uh, he wanted to keep the tooth and you can see after I did the MTA and then I placed a flowable composite and then I sent it for restoration. Now um, that was the end result um, after about maybe 20 minutes of work in the clinic. Okay, so at this point, does anybody have any questions regarding the what I've discussed up till now and the case? If anybody has any questions, you guys can shoot, no problem at all. I'll be able to answer some of them. Okay. Um, right. Uh, and, and what I'm going to do is I'll also show you another case. So here you have, uh, I think it was a maxillary molar, and that was the, the situation. You can see a very clear pulp exposure there. The symptoms of my patient was relatively uh, moderate. It wasn't that severe. And... Again, there's the bleeding pulp, application of a cotton pellet with saline, and the result after the hemostasis. And there you go, placement of MTA. All right, so that's another case. This was a maxillary molar case. All right.
Okay, so th th um, I do this uh, generally um, when my patients, um, um, I, f I feel their symptoms are relatively um, low tier. I, I would prefer to do this instead of uh, putting them through a complex endodontic procedure. It's, it's cheaper and there's always the potential for um, um, doing the root canal treatment later in case it fails. And, and for me, leaving uh, uh, pulp tissue in the canal is much, much better option, if possible, than placing gutta percha and sealer. Right, and then let me show you another. This is, these are a few other cases which I've done. Uh, here you have a, um, an upper molar and a premolar, two teeth next to each other. There is, uh, this was, I think this is a, um, um, immediately post-operative. I have a two-year recall of this case. The root canals are as they are. There is no rarefaction. Um, I'm okay. So back to the list. I'm asking pulpotomy success in adults. Dr. Fatma is asking me what are the the success rates now. If we're thinking and putting in mind the old pulpotomy procedures using formocresal glutaraldehyde or um, um, electrocautery, these 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 type of pulpotomies wouldn't give very high success because the end result we know from the beginning would be pulp death. Now, if we go to the research more recently, we can I can I can think I can pull out maybe two or three papers right now. We have. Um, this one by Nisreen Taha from um, from Jordan. Sorry about that. So Nisreen Taha from Jordan, and the success rate here is somewhere around 92% over uh, one year postoperatively. This was using MTA, so a 92% success rate in this one from the group in Jordan. Um, and then you'd have this one. Uh, from uh, another group where they estimated, I think it was a three-year study or a two-and-a-half-year study. It was maybe um, an 89% success or an 84% 80, success. And, you know, 87, I remember this one was 87%. And then another one from the Jordan group we're using biodentine was, uh, I think she did a, they did a one-year post-operative. And this one was nearly 100% success clinical. And some of them, if you notice this paper specifically, the title is an outcome of full pulpotomy using biodentin in case of adult patients with symptoms of irreversible pulpitis. So in, in these cases, uh, in, in this paper, she actually chose, um, the, the authors actually chose um, um, cases in which there were signs of irreversible pulpitis. And, and this is where the trick is. Um, how can we select a case that is um, sufficient uh, enough to be able to do this um, that has um, that has irreversible pulpitis and to make sure that our patients um, or the case will succeed that is that is the the main issue again um, um, I'm being asked by Fatma um, or oh, before I go back to Fatma, um, Muhammad is asking me if bleeding doesn't take two minutes to stop. Now, the, 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 this, this is where it gets a little tricky. Usually I do it for two minutes and then I try again for another two minutes. And if the bleeding doesn't stop, I go for a root canal treatment. Now, I've, there is some research where people have tried to evaluate two minutes, four minutes and six minutes um, of, of um, hemostasis. But practically speaking, I wouldn't risk more than uh, a four-minute trial. The case that I showed you with the lower eight, it took me, I did two minutes. It was still bleeding a little bit, and I spent maybe one more minute um, applying pressure with, with, uh, with uh, paper points, and then I, I started my procedure. Um, okay, I have another question here. Fatma is asking me, will we need to do a crown on the pulpotomized teeth or not? It depends, again, on the state of the 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 the, the crown, um, uh, um, this 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 is this is something for the restorative dentist to evaluate. Abdullah Ramzi is asking me: Could it be used when it is infected in such deep caries? And the case is yes, because when you remove the 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 rationale is that when you remove the coronal portion of the pulp, 
you've removed a big portion of the infected pulp and we're hoping that what's left can uh, regain its uh, retain its vitality so um, yes and there's a lot of groups which are actually uh, if I showed if I remember the paper that I showed right now there were people who were um, uh, looking at um, um, the the cases with irreversible pulpitis signs of irreversible pulpitis probably means that it is it is infected to some extent um, Muhammad Quraysh MTA versus Biodentin which to select mm, they both give very high um, uh, success rates there haven't been a long-term cross-sectional studies where we can evaluate both but one of the big advantages of the Biodentin is that you don't have to wait for six to eight hours and you can wait for 11 minutes for initial um, setting and you can apply a restorative material immediately okay um, Fatma's asked me, I have a molar with multiple canals and one of these canals are necrotic uh, and pulpitis in the other. Can I do pulpotomy? Um, that's the risky business. If one of your canals is necrotic and the other one is vital, you, they're probably too far down the, the inflammatory process to do uh, much. You may be able to do that. Yani mumkin low um it's um, it, one of them is bleeding too much say the palatal canal is bleeding a lot and you can't stop the bleeding the palatal canals you could probably do a root canal to the palatal canals and do a pop a popotomy to the buccal canals that's possible but then once you've started the root canal I, I don't know it's, it would be pointless I suppose in maybe in a lower eight or an upper eight okay now uh, this is not to say that there isn't cases without failure. So this is one of my cases from 2015. This is a, a she's a dentist, and you can look at this case very clearly. You can see um, she's got uh, uh, nice curves. And the, the doctor at the time, I told her, how about we go for a pulpotomy? She was really busy. She couldn't come for the visits. And she said, okay, fine. Uh, I did the pulpotomy in 2015, and this is the state in 2020. I'm just I'm not trying to make it appear that every single case works but what it, what I'd like to show you here is that what she, what happened is this doctor she left for she left for a few years this is a 5 year difference between the x-rays and you can see there is radiolucency around the roots and if you look very clearly here in the forcation there is a perforation now she didn't come to me but she went to another dentist and um the other dentist um couldn't find the canals. He was not a microdentist. He couldn't find the canals, and during his, his search for the canals, he perforated in the in the forcation area, and he told her she needed to extract. She came to me maybe two weeks ago before we had the lockdown here in Egypt, and and if you look, what I wanted to show you is that the MTA may have been disturbed, yes, but if you look, you can still see the canals. Now, one of the drawbacks of our old pulpotomy procedures was that inadvertently, because of the, necro the necrosing pulp or the fixation of the pulp, you would end up uh, having calcified canals. But this is a five-year follow-up from here to here, and you can still see the canal structure within the roots. So this is generally um, one of the, the, the sticking points for pulpotomy procedures. Uh, Abdullah Ramzi is asking me, what do you think about placing a collagen sponge in a big exposure? I'm not familiar with this procedure, uh, Abdullah, and uh, maybe I, if there's something like this, I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. Yes, um, uh, Muhammad Quraysh is asking me about the case I just showed with the fracture. The reason why she went to the dentist wasn't because of the pain, but it is because of the coronal seal um, uh, required... Uh, so not because of the coronal seal, because the, um, the palatal cusp or the lingual cusp fractured. And when the lingual cusp uh, fractured, uh, she went for restoration. So the doctor wanted to place a post and core. He removed my filling, couldn't find the canals, couldn't place a post and core, and perforated in the process. Right, again, I'll just um, I'm going to show you another case. 
All right, so there is an, uh, this is an upper uh, um, uh, first molar. There's the initial access into the pub. There was, it had a composite restoration. Patient was complaining of pain post-operatively. It was a deep composite restoration. And then this is slight opening of the access again. And there's bleeding from the pub. Placing a cotton with saline, two minutes. Still a little more bleeding. And then the bleeding stopped, maybe about three minutes in. Placement of bioceramics or calcium hyd uh, hyd um, hydraulic calcium silicate, and that's that's the end of that one. So again, uh, and this is my regular protocol. I do it over and over again. I I'm, I'm I even whenever I open up a regular case of of of, of uh, endodontics, my eye is always on. Um, how how it, how the pulp is bleeding, the behavior of the bleeding. If I can control the bleeding to a certain extent, and and this tooth doesn't necessarily need a severe restoration. In this case, I would think about suggesting pulpotomy to my patient. It's a much quicker procedure, um, and it, it it and you have to give your 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 doctor your patient this uh, possibility. So um, again, um, I'm just showing you another case here. So you have. This is a, a lower molar, again, bleeding, and then control of bleeding, and placement of, in this case, MTA. Okay, so um, before I, I'm gonna show you, I know I've been showing you a lot of cases, the same procedure over and over again. I've been using it for many years, and very successfully, um, I don't. I don't have an ego thing where I have to place gutta percha and files into every case. I'm. Uh, this is this is the pinnacle of minimally invasive endodontics. If you can open up a small access cavity and do a very conservative pulpotomy procedure, conserve pulp, conserve tooth structure. Why not? Yes, Mona Adil. That was. I don't know when you joined. We're talking about a com uh, adult. A permanent solution, not not a temporary solution. Adult pulpotomies as a permanent solution. Fatma uh, Pulpotec. That's what I'm talking about. Pulpotec, uh, former creosyl compounds. This is this is not what we're looking for. This will not retain the vitality of the pulp. Pulpotec and the similar products would just end up fixing the pulp, necrosing the pulp over time because it's it's a pulp killer. While materials like MTA, biodentin, um, other types of, of bioceramics and hydro uh, hydraulic calcium silicates, these are um, definitely um, not pulp killers. Uh, uh, for me, uh, the MTA material itself, Muhammad al. al uh, Mohammed Al Arabi, I think he's asking me. MTA is expensive. How is it cheaper than a root canal? Uh, for me, um, um, the the material cost of endodontic treatments. If you look at um, using rotary uh, in instruments, placing flowable uh, gutta percha, using thermoplasticized gutta percha, um, this is and the time. If you do it in two or three visits, is definitely more time consuming and more effort consuming than placing a, a cap with an MTA. So there is no question that it's cheaper overall uh, with regards to the the, um, the 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 material and time and effort taken. Um, um, Omar Fuda, I'm sure that this uh, same lecture will be available uh, after we end, and you can go back and watch the video. CMCP, Formocreasel, Muhammad Quraysh, they are the same pulp killers. Dalia Muhammad is asking me about open apices. Um, um, we can deal with them. We place, it depends if it's, um, if you're going to do an apical plug or if you require um, revascularization. There are many um, um, situations where we could do that. Um, but this is not the the platform for it today. Maybe another lecture on dealing with open apex cases. Um, Ahmed Azam, no, I, I I never 
that that is that is you know, Ahmad Azam is asking me an interesting question. We are dealing with cases that might require intrapropyl anesthesia containing epinephrine to reduce blood flow. On the other hand, this anesthesia may reduce the pulp of blood flow causing ischemia. What is your recommended technique uh, to go intrapropyl anesthesia or try another type of anesthesia? Okay, Ahmad Azam, if this is going to be related to pulpotomy, if you start injecting things into the pulp, you you do the root canal. I am talking about controlling bleeding by application of mild pressure pressure within the access cavity using a saline and um, a cotton. But if you instead in, you're going to start using intrapulpal anesthesia, you're you're giving yourself a false indication of bleeding, because once you insert anesthesia into the pulp space or into the root canals under high pressure, it will result in uh, is uh, hemostasis, but that is not the reality of the pulp state. Um, like I said, Yasser is asking me, can it be used unless there is severe pain? That's the tricky port, port, uh, part, yeah, Yasser. Um, um, to define uh, the bleeding and to combine it with the symptoms. Uh, usually, I would not try if there is severe uh, pulpitis. I wouldn't go for a pulpotomy, but uh, the, the the group from Jordan, uh, Nisreen Taha's group, they tried it with ir signs of irreversible pulpitis. Uh, I can't remember the text in the paper. Uh, it can't be that um, um, too, too irreversible pulpitis. Too okay, uh, what is the material we can put above? Uh, Ihab Saber is asking me... Um, um, what material can you place over the MTA? Like I said, you need to uh, place a, a, a cotton within the pulp space for six to eight hours to allow for setting of the MTA, and then you can restore with any composite material you like, whatever uh, whatever does it for you. Red and Nahas, if we fix the pulp, that is not a long-term solution. Uh, you didn't um, hear me in the beginning. Fixing agents like CMCP and formocresum is only a temporary solution. I'm using these, this technique as a permanent solution for our patients. Okay. Um, right, I'm just going to go back to another case. So this was a premolar. Again, um, there, uh, it's, it's, there's, a, there's still caries, decay. Uh, here you will find uh, I did my uh, pulpotomy. In this case, it, it was a premolar. And you can look here very clearly. You can see the, there was a, a, um, two canals, and they were in the, I think, um, two or three millimeters into the canal. So I did a very deep pulpotomy here. There's a close-up. And I would uh, uh, play, apply paper points in this case to uh, achieve hemostasis and then MTA placement. So again, the same protocol, whether it be a premolar, a molar, and an anterior, it's the same protocol. And here you can see the post-operative of this case. There you go. I went in very far into the canal. Again, this was a dentist and the dentist was very happy doing that. Okay, um, Muhammad al Askari is asking me, do we need to clean the cavity with so with hypo or with saline only? Uh, look, there's a lot of research done in this, and a lot of people use sodium hypochloride within the cavity. I personally use only saline. I don't use uh, sodium hypochloride. Okay, Ihab Sabri is asking me, if the patient comes with exposed pulp, can we do the MTA? Can we do the MTA pulpotomy? And who can I know? How can I know that the radicular pulp is not infected? Uh, Ihab, you need to have come in from the beginning. Uh, I discussed this in the beginning of the lecture. It it depends on the level of bleeding. Okay, so for my final case today, um, which ones, Ya Fatma? Asking me, I have some of my follow-ups uh, today. I have. 
um, um, not, not many of my follow-ups today, but I do have cases which have um, failed, like the one I showed you, and I have a lot of success cases as well. But not, not today, uh, with SF. Yeah. Okay, uh, my final case for today, this is a, just a, an interesting case and gives you some uh, food for thought. This was a traumatic injury case, upper central, and this is the case. She came to me, you can see the palatal, there is a fracture. Um, here I removed the fracture portion, and there you can see um, a pulp exposure, ex pulp exposure, or not an exposure, you can see a shadow of the pulp build up, and in this case I did a there you can see it. there's an actual blood clot in the in the coronal pulp and I did a deep pulpotomy here again placement of MTA and there's the final post op okay right so any questions um, Riyad Yusuf is asking me um,